to thank Sister, Sister Newton for how y'all bring the music for us this morning and allow the presence of God to come in our midst. We thank you for sharing your gifts with us. Because our worship has been made the best. Amen. 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 That's one thing I've been praying for a long time. If I could just have a song. Uh, is anybody else here? You just like to have a song? Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning church. This morning, scripture is found in the Psalm number 42. I like to read in your hearing verses 1 through 5. Psalm 42. Some people say the 42nd division of Psalm. Amen. I don't know whether you got that from, but uh, that's all right. Amen. 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 The psalmist says this. As the deer pants for the streams of water, yeah. so my soul pants for you, yeah. my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Yeah. When can I go and meet with God? Mm. My tears have been made my food day and night. Yeah. While men say to me all day long, where is your God? Mm. These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go with the multitude leading the process, leading the process process to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the fest festive throngs. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. If I could for a little while, I'd like to talk with you about a thought called a passion for his presence. A passion for his presence. Let us pray. Again, God, we stand behind your sacred desk at this time of the proclamation of your word. We ask you to sit me down and allow your spirit to stand up. Allow me to speak with simplicity, clarity, and power. And when it's all said and done, I'll be more than careful to give your name the glory and the praise. It's in Jesus' name I pray and say amen. 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 A passion for his presence. Community. This morning, let us look at this passage and think about the subject, a passion for its presence. There's a gospel song that was recorded some time ago that is very interesting to me as we talk about worship. Donald Lawrence and the Tri-City Singers recorded a gospel song several years ago with Daryl Coley as the lead. And it said, in essence, when Sunday comes, yeah. I won't have to cry no more. Yeah. There's something about, there's something that happens in me when Sunday comes. I know I can get to the house of God and I can get to the place where I can worship and adore the true and living God when Sunday comes. I don't know how you feel about it. I don't know how you feel about Sunday, but something special about Sunday to me. There's something very special about gathering with the people of God. Something special about coming into the house of prayer and worshiping God with everything that is within me. Right. Community, I, I, I like to see the smiles on the saints' face when a song is sung that they enjoy. I like seeing a rejuvenated or lifted heart when the scripture is read that folk can really resonate with. Have, have, have you ever been in church and you heard a word that almost seemed tell it just for you? Yeah. Have you ever come to church and it seemed like the preacher knew all about your business? Yeah. It seems as if the entire worship service fits your situation. It yeah. seems to work to your circumstances. Yeah. It seems like everything that went on that day was all about you. Uh -huh. And you wanted to know who's been talking about me? Uh -huh. Who's been telling my business? Who told the preacher about what's going on in my life? Isn't it interesting, church, how the Holy Spirit can tell, can tell and make things just for you? Yeah. Isn't it interesting how the Word of God can seem to be fashioned just for you? Yeah. And when you're thinking that the service is just for you, there's somebody on the same pew that will say that Word was just for me. Uh -huh. Church, it's just amazing how the Holy Spirit operates and makes everything work out just so that we can go home refreshed, we can go home renewed, and we can go home revived. We can go back with a sense of having been in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. 
The Bible says that in his presence there's fullness of joy, and out of his right hand there are the pleasures forevermore. And when I come to church, I expect to feel better on the way out than I did on the way in. There ought to be something about that song. There ought to be a handshake. There ought to be a hug. There ought to be a smile. There ought to be a change in my situation as when I came in as well as when I'm going out. And whereas I came in with my hump, my head hung low, I ought to go back with a smile on my face and a testimony that God is still able to do all yeah, things yeah, yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And when I come into church, that, that's really what I expect. I expect to feel better because I've been in the presence of an almighty God. Amen. It's not just about the folk. It's not, it's about the presence of God. It's not just about being on a certain pew. It's not about being, it's about being in the presence of an almighty God. I have a passion, a passion for God's presence. And I need to have something that moves me so that Saturday night I can get ready for Sunday morning. I don't wait till Sunday morning to get ready, but I get ready on Saturday night. That when I get up in the morning, I'm getting into my praise and worship. And some best praise and worship I have is my from leaving my house, coming here to the church. I got up early this morning that I can make sure that I got my praise and worship. I ought to come to church ready for revival. Yeah, yeah. Revival ought to happen every time I walk in the doors of God's house. Yeah, yeah. I want revival every time I get here. I want to be rejuvenated every time I come. Yeah. And even if I get challenged by the word of God, I ought to be better because of that too. Yeah. Even when it doesn't fit with what I think is right, what I think is the right thing. I, I'm better because I've been in the presence of the Almighty God. Yeah, yeah. And community, I believe that's what's going on as we approach our text in Psalm 42. The Psalms, the Psalms are, are some of the best literature, some of the yeah. best written material yeah. that we can ever find in the 66 books of Scripture. The psalm speaks of every life experience. Yeah. The psalm helps us to understand how people really go through circumstances, yeah. how folk go through trials, yeah. and how folk go through tribulations yeah. and the vicissitudes of life. We can think about every aspect of life through the eyes of the psalmist. Uh -huh. Church is just interesting how we can look through these psalms and even see see ourselves in them. We can see their battles and we can see our battles. We can see their tremendous obstacles and challenges as well as see ours. And we see their enemies on their trail as well as we see ours. And all of us at some point in our lives can resonate with having that thing called an enemy on our trail. Mm -hmm. Everyone can remember or can reflect on some time in your life when you have to deal with some type of enemy. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on in the psalm that we chose this morning. The psalmist is frustrated. The psalmist is concerned. The psalmist is concerned because as much as he enjoys worship, he can't get to the temple of the Lord to worship as he desires. Mm -hmm. And as much as he loves going to church, mm -hmm. as much as he looks forward to coming into the presence of the Most High God, as much as he looks forward to being in the temple and being in the sanctuary, he can't get there because his enemies are so fierce yeah. and they won't let him get to church. Yeah. Church, that's a horrible thing to be exiled from the house of prayer. You cannot get to church. This is a bitter reality. He said, I need to be in the presence of the Most High God. Community, look at this thing. Listen to what the psalmist said. As the deer pats for the streams of water, so my soul pats for you, right. O oh God. He says, my soul is longing for the living God. In other words, church, I need to get in contact with my God. I need to be in a place where I know my God is resident and my God is active. I need to get into God's house and feel his presence and experience his joy and know his peace. Once again, feel his salvation and the life that is to live. I need to get there. I need to get into his presence. I need to know that he's mine and I'm his and I want to feel him moving on the inside of me. Have you ever been there where you, you just got to get to church? It's something about the church. It's something about getting to the house of prayer. I got to get there to get into the presence of the living God. I got to get there no matter how I go, whether I go by train, whether I go by bus, whether I go by car, whether I walk on feet, I got to get there. Is there anybody up in here this morning that's excited about being in the house of God? Is there anybody here excited about being in the presence of the true and living God? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Have you ever had that kind of feeling? Mm -hmm. Where you knew you were right where God was? And you knew that you and God had a thing going on? Uh -huh. Have you ever been where you, you had the presence of God saturating all over you and engulfing you? Oh, that wonderful thing to know that God is all over you, moving in you and through you. The psalmist says, I long for that. Yeah. And he uses a water image. He says, I'm dehydrated because I can't get to my source. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been, let me ask you, have you ever been thirsty? Uh -huh. ha -ha has anybody ever been thirsty? You know what it is like being thirsty? And then you get that cold bottle of water, open it up and begin to drink it down, and as it quenches your thirst, you cry your sanctified soul, hallelujah, for God's water every now and then. That's how you should cry for God. Oh, yeah, I know you can do it at the house, but every now and then, you need to cry for God in his church. You need to cry, God, come into me, saturate me, soil me. Do what you can do for me, God, that I can't do for myself. God, let me have an experience on the inside that folk can see on the outside. Allow your spirit to fall afresh on me. My brothers and sisters, what I glean from this first verse of the psalm is that the psalmist makes being in the presence of God a priority. He puts reverence as a priority in his life. Reverence is not something that is on the back burner for this brother. Yeah. Reverence and worship is not just something that happens once a week. Worship is something that's a priority for him. Yeah. Community, have you ever, have you prior, prioritized worship? Uh -huh. Community, have you made worship the top priority in your life? Or do Sundays just come and go? Is, this, is, is the opportunity to be with the people of God just another stop during your week? Do you have a need, a longing to be in the presence of the Almighty God? Or is it just something you do because that's what decent folk do? The psalmist says, this is not just something I do for form or fashion. This is something that is high on my list of priorities. This is a necessity. Worship is a requirement. And worship is also something that I choose to do. And that's how our worship ought to be for all of us my sisters and brothers. You ought to be in tune with God. You ought to love God so much. There ought to be so much an intimacy between you and your God that you can't pass up a day of worship. You can't pass up a moment of worship. You can't pass up a minute of worship. You can't pass up an hour of worship. You just can't allow the day to pass without being in the presence of the Most High God. Worship must become a priority for you. This brother said, I need worship. He said, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And when I go and meet with God, why can't I go to church? Why can't I get to the temple? Well, community, I need to push this text a little bit more. I understand that we need to come to church as much as we can to be in the presence of God and the presence of God's people. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of the brother. We need to be in church. Have I believe that the psalmist had a misunderstanding of this whole notion of worship? He says, when I go and meet up with the living God, when can I get into the temple? He unfortunately has a lo localized and a centralized thing about the presence of God that he feels that he got to go to church to be in the presence of the Most High God. He yes. made God a preocchio God, a God who exists only within the four consecrated walls, a God who only can be found on a plot of ground in a certain location. Right. But somebody in here has been walking with God long enough to know that it really doesn't matter if you can worship here or you can worship uh -huh. somewhere else. Yeah. Anywhere you can get God's attention. God is everywhere at the same time. Yeah. You can get him in your bedroom. You can get him in your bathroom. You can get him in your sitting room. You can get him by your garden. You can get him in your automobile. You can get him in your cubicle. You can get him standing in the middle of the street. All you gotta do is call out Jesus. 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 And at the name of Jesus, he'll stop everything and come see about you. Have you ever been there when nobody was around? You couldn't text nobody. You couldn't get him on social media. You couldn't call nobody. And you called on the name of Jesus. And in the midnight hour, he came by to see about
about you. When your body was rocking with pain and your mind was confused and your heart was heavy, when you called on the name of Jesus, he came by to see about you. He came by as a healer. He came by as a comforter. He came by as a savior. And he came by as a friend. He came by as your walking day. He came by as a rock in the weary land. He came by as the almighty God. Does anybody who understands that worship of God is not about a place? It's not about a person. Is anybody who understands that worship of God is not about a place? Mm -hmm. It's about a person. Thank you. It's not about a where. It's about a who. Yes. It's not about geography. Mm. It's about intimacy. Yes. And when I worship God, it doesn't matter where I am. I can worship God in a full house or where there is no one around. I can worship him without a piano, and I can worship him if a chord is never struck on an order. Is there anybody up in here? who has read John 4, and you would know that worship is not about a where you are, it's about a who you are in communion uh -huh. with. Anybody know that I can worship God on my way to church? And some of my best worship has been on my way to church. Uh -huh. uh, is anybody here that worship while you're on your way? Do you worship while you're getting dressed? Do you worship while you're eating your breakfast? Do you worship? You shouldn't come all the way here to get excited. You should be excited on your way here. Hear me, somebody. If you can't worship by yourself, you can't worship at all. Because there's something about you and God and a holy hookup that makes all the difference in the world. Is there anybody in this house this morning that experienced a holy hookup? Is there anybody here know what a holy hookup is? That's when you and God begin to have fellowship one with another. That's when you and God have communion with one another. That's when God shows up and you're running and ain't nobody chasing you. That's when God shows up and you're crying and ain't nobody bothering you. Have you ever been there? Have you ever experienced God in a personal way? Have you ever been in the presence of the Most High God? Don't look at me funny. Be real with me. If you ain't been with God, it's all right. There's still time. But if you've been with God, say so. Let the redeemed of God say so. If God never does anything else for you, other than provide you salvation, you still ought to have a lifestyle of worship. If everything goes crazy in your life, once you leave out of this house this morning, you still ought to give God still, worship. Still. Yeah. Even if things don't go your way, still. you still should know how to give God worship. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Can I get a witness? Amen. I believe the three Hebrew boys made the point very plain to us. They said, even if our God doesn't deliver us, yeah. we know he's able to yeah. deliver yeah. us. Yeah. And, and so we won't bow down before anybody else. We will only bow down before the true and living God. We will only adore the true and living God. It doesn't matter what kind of idol you erect. Our God is still worthy of worship and nobody else. And that's the good news. No matter what you're going through in life, you ought to still give God praise. No matter what trouble you're in, no matter how much hell you catch, God is still worthy of praise. No matter how, how bad your body is aching and your head is hurt, God is still worthy of praise. And you say, preacher, you're crazy. Well, you try to praise God when you ain't feeling well. Try to praise God when things ain't working out. Try to praise God when your heart is heavy and your mind is confused. God will show up and God will show out when you give God praise, but when you don't feel like it, when you can give God some sacrificial praise, God will show up, and God will show up. For me, for me, for me, I won't say for you, for me, I seen God at his best work on the sickest day of my life when I was up at uh, Hackensack Medical Center getting chemotherapy. Black, black, I don't know how black I was. I was black. I was black. I was black. You ever seen black being black? That chemotherapy burns you up. When I wash up, the face cloth is all black. 
because my skin is shed. But it was in those moments when the wife and the children wasn't there, and I try to explain to you, you don't understand how God moves when y'all ain't here. Yeah. When I'm all by myself wondering, God, why do I have to go through this? God, why me? Why me? Why me? And God responds, why not you? Yeah. I need you to widen your witness. I need you to be better for me. I need you to grow in me. I need you to develop in me that you can be a greater witness by what I brought you through. Everybody don't make it through this. Yes. But I'm going to bring you from this side to the other side. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And he did. Yes. I've been in a lot of places, and I've been in a lot of circumstances. But you don't want nobody in your life more than you want Jesus. Mm. Yes. Is there anybody in here who just got a love affair going on with the Lord? Yes. Is there anybody in here who just can't help but love God? Mm. Can't help but worship God? You wake up in the morning thinking about his goodness. Yes. You go to bed at night thinking about his greatness. Yes. You just stop in the middle of the day and take a praise break because you realize how awesome and how wonderful God is. Amen. I have a longing to get back to God. My soul thirsts for the living God. Where can I go and meet my God? You can't go. You, you, you ain't got to go anywhere. I can stay wherever I am and hook up with God. I can be at any place or at any point in my life and know that I can meet God wherever I am. The psalmist also has a frustrating time because his enemies begin to taunt him. Uh -huh. He says, uh -huh. you can't get to church. You can't get to worship. Where is your God now? Uh -huh. You're in this horrible situation. Where is your God now? Uh -huh. it, it's right there in the third verse. Church. Uh -huh. the, the folk wanted to know, where is your God now? Now that you've gone through all that you've gone through, now now that you're in the circumstance you're right now in, where is your God now? Have you ever been had a circumstance where folk taunted you because of your circumstance? The psalmist is in a deep sea of depression. He doesn't know how he's going to handle what he's dealing with. And all his teasing and all his taunting begins to frustrate him. Where is your God? You've been tired, and it seems that you don't have enough to pay your basic bills. Where is your God now? You have a debil debilitating disease that you can't get rid of. Somebody asked you, where is your God now? Your children are strung out and hung up. Somebody asked, where is your God now? Every now and then, circumstances will taunt you like that. Every now and then, situations will get you like that. But I'm so glad that this psalmist had at least a priority reference. But not only did he have a prioritized record, it says in verse 4, he begins to help us a little bit more. He said, these things I remember as I pour out my soul. He vents, he complains, he laments, he's frustrated. But he says, these things I remember as I pour out my soul. I remember how I used to go with the multitude leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. He says, situations are bad right now. Circumstances are are not all pleasing right now, but in spite of my depression, in spite of my mood of melancholy, in spite of my difficulty that I face right now, I've got a personal reflection yeah. that allows me to begin to remember how things used to be. Yeah. It may not be right now, but I remember when God handled my last situation that I had to deal with. Yeah. Things may yeah. not be as well as I would like them to be today, but I remember a time when I used to go to church. Yeah. I may not be able to get there now, but I used to lead the folk into the house of God. And I remember the joy I had when I was going to church. I remember the shouts of thanksgiving and the praise that I lifted up when I went to the house of prayer. Yeah. And even though I can't get there now, I'm just going to let my mind take me back. Uh -huh. I'm going to go, I'm going to the beginning and reflect on what God has already done. Already. Is there anybody uh -huh. here got a memory? Uh -huh. You can put your memory on we wire and remember what God did this morning. Remember what God did yesterday. Remember what God did. Last week. Remember what God did last year. When you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for you, deep down in your face, you cry, so you cry, oh, thank God for saving me. Thank you. 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 Because there will be some times yeah. when you can't find anybody else yeah. 
that help you. There will be some times when you can't find anybody else yes, to say yes, a good word yes. or an encouraging word to you. Mm. And if you can just let your mind take you back yes. to that last time that God made a way. No. I believe there's something about seeing what God has done that will give you strength to know that God can do it again. Yes. Is there anybody here yes. in this house of prayer who knows that God made us in repeat? Performances. Our God is able to do it again. What he already done, he can do it again. What he did on yesterday, he can do today. What he did on last year, he can do today. What he did on years ago, he can do today. God is specializing in repeat performances. Thank you, Lord. Look at what it says. Thank you, God. Why are you downcast, oh my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? He says, You've been reflecting on what God has done. So I dare you to still, I, I, I dare you to be still downcast. I dare you to still be disturbed. The psalmist says, I will yet praise him, yes. my Savior, yes. my God. I, I like that, church. Yes. Every now and then, you yes. ought to have a yet praise. Uh -huh. Yet I will praise him. Yes. He begins yes. to talk to himself. David said he encouraged himself in the Lord. Right. But sometimes you ought to find anybody you may not. Sometimes you won't find anybody who's able to encourage you. Sometimes you can't find anybody who you can talk to. So every now and then, you ought to learn how to encourage yourself. Yes. Folk get tired of dealing with you time after time. They say when you come to them over and over again, you're trying to make me codependent. So see, since folk don't want you bothering them, go ahead and talk to yourself. And say, Self, get yourself together. Yes. Self, get your act together. Self, pick up yourself. Self, turn yourself around. Self, get your life in order. And give God praise in the midst of your doing. In the midst of what you're going through. Give God praise. Give him a hallelujah. Give him a thank you, Jesus. Give him a praise to the Lord. Every now and then, all by yourself. When mama ain't around. When daddy ain't around. You got to give God praise for yourself. When your sister and your brother are not around. When your husband and your wife, you got to be able to give God praise. I don't know about you, community, but I got my hope in God. I don't know how things are going to work out in the future, but I know who holds the future. Uh -huh. yeah. And if he holds the future, yeah. he's able to handle me, and he's able to handle my future. Right. Yeah. Is there anybody in here who understands the power of holding the God's unchanging hand? Mm -hmm. yeah. So this brother was, Thank you, God. was had, had prioritized worship. He also took some time for personal reflection. But lastly, because of his personal reflection, this brother had a powerful rejuvenation. Uh -huh. There's something, community, about thinking about what God has already done. Already. There's something about going back, letting your mind think back, that does, does something for you, but will never be done just by asking somebody else to pray for you, because you know the story better than anybody else. Uh -huh. So when I get into the presence of God, even even if I come to reject, even if I come to pray, when I think about what God has already done, already. something starts to move within me. Something starts to get me busy. Something starts to rejuvenate my worship. Every now and then, I'm all by myself, and I'm crying, and ain't nobody bothering me, and I begin to give God worship, and I begin to give God praise, and I begin to thank God for all that is done. Is anybody in here got a yet praise? You're praising yet before the before the results come. Can you praise God in the midst of your pain? Yeah. Can you praise God in the midst of your suffering? Can you praise God in the midst of your heartache? Because if you can praise him in the midst of it, he'll show up and work out what you're going through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. So I refuse to go back the same way I came. Thank you, God. I refuse to go back with my head on down. Thank you, Lord, for lifting up my bow down here. Thank you for giving me a, a ease of my troubled mind. Thank you, God, for being a mind regulator and a heart fixer. Thank you, God, yes. for being a present help in this. Thank you, God, yes. for being God all by yourself. Thank you. Yes. Paul says it like Thank this. What then shall we say in response to these things? Mm. If God is for us, who can be against us? Yes. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen? Yeah. Who will, it is God who justifies. Yeah. Who, will, who then 
is the one who condemns. No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who raised, who, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, is interceding for us right now. I stop by to ask you, who shall separate us from the love of Christ Jesus? No, no. Shall trouble? No. Shall hardship? No. Who shall separate no. us from the love of Christ Jesus? Shall it be persecution no. or famine? No. Shall it be nakedness or danger? Shall it be the sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all, death all the day long, and are considered as sheep before the slot. Knowing all these things, we're more than conquered through him that loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me from the love of Christ Jesus. Don't get upset when trouble comes your way. Don't get upset when it rains in your life. Don't get upset when contrary winds begin to blow. But just give God praise, knowing that in the midst of your storm, that God still loves you. In the midst of what you're going through, your God still loves you. All you got to do is just call on his name. Just say, Jesus, I need you now. God, I don't need you to remove my trouble, but God, I need you to come in the midst of my trouble. I don't need you to remove my illness, but I need you to come in the midst of my illness. Ah, oh, whatever you're going through, just ask God to come in the midst that you can journey with God. Hold God's hand, and God holds your hand as you go through what you're going through. It's something about being in the presence of God in spite of your depression, in spite of your heartache, in spite of your disappointment. God is still there. Yes, he is. That's all I'm saying. Whatever you're going through, whatever you go through in life, God is still there. Thank you, Lord. But as a first Sunday, we got to learn not to be overwhelmed by our troubles, mm. yeah, yeah. but to press through our troubles Yes. And we can give God praise. Yes. Yes. And that's the challenge for the Christian. There's only two times you need to praise God. When you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. Because when you press through what you're going through, God shows up in a mighty way. And if you don't believe me, let me give you some Bible. What you do in secret, God says he'll reward you openly. So you can cry at night. You can wet your pit up, talking to God, but in the morning, when the sun comes up, God is right there with it. God is making a new day just for you and I. Every now and then, as we're crying at night, as we're worried about things we can't fix, God is working that thing out. But a lot of days, we take back what we give to God. I'm asking you to give it to God and leave it there. Don't tell God how to fix it, because God already knows what you stand in the need of. And if you let God have his way, God will come back and show you how this thing worked out. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. I don't need to testify today, but I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. How he can do it with your children. Yes. I'm a living witness how he did it in my own life. I'm a living witness yes. how he did it in my family. Yes. I'm a living witness that if you give it to God, yes. God will work things out. Yes. But you got to leave it in God's hands. Amen. A lot of days, our human nature, yes. particularly us as men, we want to fix things. Yes. Everything broken don't need to be fixed. Yes. Sometimes we just need to deal with the brokenness yeah. that we can give God glory yeah. and give God praise. Thank you. I know it don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. That's how you know it's God. Because if you could figure it out, yeah. it would be me. Yeah. 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 Thank you. But God will do it. God will do it. Thank you. Carl and Carl know what I'm talking about. Can you do it? As the said, won't he do it? Won't he do it? He'll do it. And others in here are witnessing too how God moved in their lives. They were worried about something. Their hearts were heavy, their minds were confused, and God moved. We see it in Sister Tony. Yes. We see it in Sister Deborah's family. We see it in many families that are here where God moved in your family's life. Yes, God. 
If you get a chance, I'm curious. If you get a chance, stop by and see Sister Elise. She's right around the corner now. She's the